Hello everybody. Welcome to Woods Walk Gun Talk number 18. We hear somebody mowing their lawn in the background. We're gonna venture off into the woods of Maine. Hope you're having a beautiful week. It's definitely right now the height of tick season. So I am definitely aware of that. Almost missed my trail. So we're going to walk through. And this is uh, Woods Walk Gun Talk number 18. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is about the time of year I ran into a baby deer in here with her mother or its mother. <clears throat> so I'm going to tread on through 77 degrees today, sunny, but with the canopy above now. We're not going to see much sun, which is going to leave me open to mosquito bites. I went against my own advice, not wearing long sleeves today. I will probably live to regret it. So. Wow, firearms talk. Well, there's a few things to talk about. Hopefully um, you caught the U.S. Senate uh, and also House, the House Committee hearing with the ATF Director, not the Senate, the House, Congressional House. I hope you got a chance to check that out, or at least some of it. One of the one of the two main topics they brought up was the ability for the ATF to pass its own laws without Congress. A Republican congressmen did not seem very happy about that. So they discussed a lot of things like the pistol brace and that was legal in 2012 which is now illegal unless you get a tax stamp. Which is wrong. Ooh. Keep my head down low here. So this is the time of year I was waiting for to go walking through here with you guys. Now that it's green. And we actually have woods to walk through. Really hope you're enjoying it. And uh, part of this trail is somewhat obscured from the storms that we've had. Well, this this part of it is still here. So anyway, uh, the ATF just seems to like do whatever they want with rules and regulations. They exaggerate existing law. They were predicating the pistol brace rule as people using a pistol brace as a stock, making it a carbine. And they were uh, basically exaggerating the 1930s carbine law for full fully automatic weapons which of course is friggin nonsense right so we're gonna go walk down through here past the uh, mosquito swamp I already had one come visit me doesn't take long if you stop for a few seconds they will actually swarm at you 
So, you may hear me slapping my head a couple of times. They like to land on earlobes and things like that. And we are in the summertime now. Right at the end of May. Oh, they fixed this broken. There was a broken step here. It looks like they fixed it with new wood. So they've been through here doing repairs from the winter storms we've had which is nice I'm going to be getting a lot of miles in today maybe about seven total I don't know how many I'll do here there you can walk seven miles here but you have to kind of walk in a uh, visit all the trails some of them more than once and I'm not going to put anybody through that plus it would make for too long of a video so I will however just casually walk through maybe take a few photos And uh, anyway, the ATF is really uh, a perfect example of a government agency abusing its authority and power, exceeding it, I should say. And um, it's really unfortunate. They like to do that. They did that with private gun sales, universal background checks, this and that, and none of it's going to hold up legally because they don't have the authority to do that. They don't care. They just do it anyway, let the court settle it. Maybe they'll win a couple. Which, you know, is not a, uh, it's not a ridiculously terrible tactic if you're trying to accomplish things, but it is pretty non-democratic to do it that way <clears throat> as far as voters go and then they spent some time talking about that Milanowski guy who got shot dead in his home because of a no-knock warrant I've talked about that before in Arkansas director of an airport no previous criminal record whether he was guilty of doing anything wrong or not we'll never know because he didn't get a trial <clears throat> but according to the media he's guilty you know how that works so anyway I've told that story about him in previous videos Basically, he would buy firearms and then sell them used. And in Arkansas, you don't need an FFL to do that. The ATF felt that he was doing it on purpose. Which I'm not even sure is illegal. I don't think it is. There's no limit on how many firearms you can buy. Or how quickly you can sell them after you buy them. They seemed to be upset that he was selling the firearms within 24 hours after buying them at gun shows and things like that, which used firearms are not illegal to sell. And it was like new, unused. So. You know, the ATF apparently didn't like that. Got a warrant from a judge, a no-knock warrant, probably an activist judge. So they showed up at his house, six o'clock in the morning, 
bashed his door in without knocking. He thought he was being intruded upon. And from what I read from the report, he had a pistol that he had kept. He loaded it, went in to see what was going on, saw people in his living room that had cut the power to his house on top of that. So all they see is shadowy figures in their house. What would you do? They said you know, Milowski fired warning shots into the floor hoping they would leave so he wouldn't have to shoot them. And right when he did that, they shot him in the head. Killed him. And a police officer got injured in the process. Still not clear how that happened. As the report says, Milanowski fired into the floor as warning shots. <coughs> so... Your guess is as good as mine. But... The family filed a lawsuit. They're probably going to win. There was no need for a no-knock warrant. He had no previ previous criminal record. <clears throat> and the method they used pretty much ensured there would be a conflict. And it also puts police officers' lives in danger. So, first thing they did when they showed up is they covered his security camera. And none of the officers were wearing body cams. None. So there's no footage. There's nothing there but the wife who witnessed it. And it was dark. And the ATF's going to say whatever they want to, obviously. They'll have the biggest attorneys defending them. Department of Justice defending them. Joe Biden defending them. So... Anyway... The pistol brace rule discussed with the House, with uh, the current president, <sighs> executive director, I should say, for the ATF, very clearly was abusing existing laws. <clears throat> that lawsuits are filed against. So if you get a chance to watch that, look it up on YouTube or C-SPAN. It's always available on there. Very nice day today. So they uh, pulled all those shenanigans. There's also a record number of FFL licenses that have been pulled for clerical errors. Simple clerical errors because these people just own a gun store, okay? One little eye not dotted or something, and they get their license pulled. Some of them, because the ATF has been so strict, have decided not to sell firearms anymore. The small business guys. Because they can't afford a legal hassle. And they're making a business decision just to quit. So we have a record number of people that have been quitting selling firearms, giving up their licenses. With good reason, probably. So things need to change. 
they are gaining ground with these tactics and uh, democracy is a painful slow son of a bitch so the lawsuits are filed and we're gonna have to wait until it goes through the courts which we may or may not win depends what kind of judge you get we all know how that goes So, we'll have to wait and see. I can hear water or something falling out of the trees, dripping. attacking me already well there's stuff dripping out of the trees I don't know what the, what the hell it is it's not raining they don't look like the kind of trees that make sap I don't know all right so we're gonna walk on <clears throat> I am going to head down to the swamp the pond where if you came with me previously we had a bunch of actually thousands thousands of frogs so we're gonna go see if the the eggs have hatched yet I think they may have so we'll go take a look this is the old fireplace here very cool place I come here so often sometimes I just walk by and I don't look at it anymore shouldn't do that could be gone tomorrow some real estate developer could make them an offer they can't refuse so so while I complain about mosquitoes and stuff, because it's swampy, it's probably a hindrance to development. But I'm sure there's techniques to get around that.
I hope all these little frogs saw me. But you can still see all those egg sacs. Now I saw somebody online posted video more in western Maine, a little bit more north, and their polywogs all hatched. These ones are still thinking about it. Yep. Well, they're still there. Unless they hatch out of those. That's just the empty. Oh, yeah, those look. One of those looks empty. Other ones are not. I could see them inside it. Very interesting. I know you can't see that probably very well because of the glare off the water. Sorry about that. Oop. I scared the frogs, they took off. over there. Oh, there's still eggs in there. Well, that's unusual. Won't be long. Mother Nature is almost done cooking. Definitely get the bugs out today. The bugs are out. Yeah, I'm just constantly hearing the trees rain something. I don't know what that is. Hello. So we're going to head down this way. Kind of a weird looking dude, in my opinion. Carrying a brown paper bag. Like there's something liquid in it. Did you notice that? He was holding it in a way to make sure it didn't fall over. I don't know what that's all about. It's funny when you see women walking alone out here. I really don't recommend it. There's bad people. She didn't look to be too concerned about it, but she looked a little nervous. There's two men she don't know. She would have been better off to keep going in this direction away from us. I know I'm a nice guy. You know I'm a nice guy. But someday she might walk through here and it won't be nice guys. That's just the day we're living in now. 
20, 30 years ago might have been different, sort of. Those things still happened. But now people seem to care a lot less. So anyway, wouldn't surprise me if they have uh, trail cameras mounted all through here, actually. The Stanton Bird Club. There's nothing on their webpage about it, but I have seen uh, boxes, um, observation boxes piled up. Uh, we, we have seen those. I think they were set up because that particular part in here has a lot of chipmunks and wildlife scurrying about. And uh, they probably photograph that stuff with trail cameras or shoot video. And certainly technology is available now. So I'm going to go down this way. And we're going to walk through Tickfield. I want to go see Whale Rock just for the sake of walking. And I have to go that way. So I'm not going to stray off in any side brush or grass. I've already gotten ticks on me twice going through there doing that. I'm just going to walk through, mind my own business. My head records whatever it records, okay? Alright. So I watched a uh, movie last night I've been waiting to see. And um, I have my free movie sources to watch. I don't pay any of these streaming services. I don't pay Disney, Disney Channel and all that stuff. I don't pay any subscriptions to anything because you don't have to. So anyway, you do have to make sure you have a good ad blocker. And um, you also have to know how to maintain the cookies on your computer. Not anything tremendously malicious, but uh, just spammy kind of stuff, information it gets. But anyway, uh, that being said, the point is, I watch it ultra high con uh, definition, commercial free. And it looks like they came through here with ATVs and a lawnmower to mow the trails. Which is really good because walking through this tall grass, it would be a tick fest. In 10 minutes, you'd probably have 100 to 200 on you. No joke. This time of year. It is definitely. So every once in a while, I'm going to stop and take a look on myself. I even picked up a tick in our own driveway. Our own yard. I was uh, cleaning one of my tires in the car and there's a little bit of grass, tall grass off to the side. And uh, sure enough, I got all hot and sweaty out there. It was during one of those really hot days we had, 90 degrees, humid. And uh, I came in, took a shower and soaped up, sudsed up, and was hosing myself off in the shower. Got all the soap off, and as I'm getting out of the shower, there's a damn tick on my calf. Even soaped up. So, that's not supposed to happen. So maybe they're ultra strong this year. <laughs> anyway, I put him in the kitchen sink and washed him away. Uh, bathroom sink, I mean. But this right here, all of this here, this is all tick infested. Big time. They hang around underneath the leaves. And there's also a lot of poison ivy in this field. So basically there's really no good reason other than to visit that apple tree, which is what I did when I got a tick on me out here. But if you stay on the trails, they don't usually hide out in the direct sunlight like that. They go on the cool side under the leaves and wait for somebody to walk by and latch onto you. A deer or a critter, cat, dog, person. And I'd be willing to bet that people aren't their first choice, but they have a limited, limited kind of lifespan. 
and they need to do their business. So I'm also not going to stand in one place too long. And the other thing to keep in mind with ticks is they're very slow. They don't jump at on you. Nothing like when you see horror movies called Ticks from around 1980 with Ron Howard's brother in it. The geeky looking brother. I like to do a I like to do a spinorama to get the visual. We got these bird boxes right here. So there's poison ivy all through here, ticks, and they just put those boxes there so birds have a place to nest. They eat ticks. So Anyway, ticks take a while before they start feasting on you. Because first they have to latch on to you. Then they have to find a way to get underneath their clothes. I got the legs to my pants tied closed because they're military style cargo pants. It's part of the reason why they have those. I'm also wearing knee high socks. Weightlifting socks, if you want to be technical about it. Very patriotic. They get a flag on it and U.S. symbol and it says USA on my toes. How cool is that? I have patriotic feet. Wow, what a beautiful day. I mean, look at it. This is what we were waiting for if you've been following my walks. But By the end of summer, this right here is going to be really tall. All kinds of stuff living in it. <laughs> so, oh yeah, poison ivy's up. Yep, we'll stay out of there. Mm-hmm. Don't want anything to do with that. I'm fresh out of calamine lotion. So anyways, uh, a lot of interesting stuff going on with government agencies with regard to firearms. Um, thankfully, this is an election year that got started on it late because there were too busy screwing up other things globally. So domestically, while we have some issues like him and his pen, um, pretty much doing his DEI, diversity, equity and inclusion, equality, equity, yada yada. They are, he went and changed Title 10, Title 9, I mean, which is a anti discrimination uh, law. And he amended it illegally. And that's obviously going to get overturned by the courts, but like I told you, they just go ahead and do it. And they order the school departments to do it. They have to comply with it until the court turns it over. So depending on what court it's in. That's why they do that. Some of it will stick. Most of it won't. They found another way to forgive student debt. Buying votes is what they did. The youth vote.
These people have no scruples whatsoever. So hopefully we can get rid of them. I was watching uh, Biden speaking at West Point. I watched a couple of clips and geez, I mean, he's, he's gone. He can't even talk anymore. And uh, the other comical thing is, is now the Biden campaign is requesting any debates with Trump that they're sitting down. Presidential debates have never sat down. That's always been vice presidents. And you know why he wants to sit down. Because he can't stand for an hour and a half physically. Because he's old. He's done. He's finished. He can't even stand on a stage for a debate. So, you know, he's been wearing those special shoes because he falls down. And he falls down going up the stairs. That seems to be his biggest problem. He can't lift his feet and negotiate walking upstairs because of neurological decline because he's having dementia issues. His brain is not sharp. So that affects everything. It affects your mobile skills, your mobility, your neuro connections. So they need to, uh, you know, Trump was saying he doesn't think Biden's going to make it to the election. Uh, he probably won't, because they have until the end of June. Primary voting across the country is taking place in June. Uh, some places kicked off already, like Nevada, this past Saturday, yesterday. So, if you live in those areas, start checking out where your primary voting is. <sighs> those are our primary elections for local elections, by the way. But the DNC can decide to pull their candidate. So, somebody might be talking to Joe and tell him, you know, you know, you ain't, you ain't cutting the mustard. We need to replace you. Your poll numbers are terrible. Can't speak well. He's not going to be happy about it. But technically, they could force him out if they wanted to. It would be an ugly thing. But... They know right now Trump is beating him, so they hate Trump so much that it would not shock me to screw over Biden to make sure Trump doesn't win. Try to insert someone like Gavin Newsom, someone who's a house name, but he's so California left lunatic, he will be easy to catch in his BS like his uh, homeless housing that he promised and not one shelter has been built. He said that was a done deal, ready to go. Just vote for me, it'll be done. And uh, supposedly people voted for him, which I doubt. But uh, I can't see anybody from California winning the presidency of the entire country. Gavin's too far, uh, too radical. He'll definitely win New York and those places, that's a given. But the battleground states, uh, I don't think uh, Michigan voters will go for that. I just don't. Wisconsin either. Even with them cheating in Milwaukee. So anyway, this is a Guns Talk Wood Walk. Woods Walk, a gun talk number 18. I don't only talk about firearms, I talk about whatever. And it's just a walk in the woods. Every time I slow down for a second, I get a mosquito buzzing at my ear. They are out. <laughs> they are out, folks. So, <sighs> we will walk. I got a mosquito that's I'm trying to elude them and I have to keep stopping to step on rocks. Best way to lose a mosquito is to just keep walking. Eventually they can't keep up. We're gonna go see the whale rock. When the whale is rocking, don't come a knocking. You knew I was gonna say it. 
So that is Whale Rock. 890 feet that way. I think I just squooshed a mosquito on my ear. I actually smacked my my Bluetooth. Good way to break it. Anyways, I got a pretty good sweat going right now. I check my pockets every once in a while, make sure I don't lose something. So yeah, thanks a lot for watching and if you have any questions, go ahead and ask them. I don't know everything. In fact, there's a lot I don't know. Even with firearms, I never regard myself as a know-it-all or an expert. I just enjoy shooting like everybody else does. Thought it'd be cool to make a channel to talk about them. amazing how nature just reabsorbs everything that got destroyed from storms. That tree that fell right there, 10 years from now, that'll all be rotten wood feeding and fertilizing the forest floor for new trees. I just passed some droppings from something, probably a raccoon, probably from earlier this morning. A lot of wildlife through here. Not so much this time of day, but sometimes I have come through here and have seen deer. Whew. Ooh, mosquitoes. Mosquitoes. So anyway, that Civil War movie, I was talking about that. Very interesting movie because it's not what you think it would be. You'd think it would be this traditional kind of like Hollywood cookie cutter, CGI fest, jet planes, bombs, attacks, military stuff. No, this was more about what it would be like to actually be going through it or parts of the country were divided and having a civil war. And um, they loosely, loosely kind of predicate it on a president that comes to power who obviously is an authoritarian and I'm pretty sure without saying it they're trying to make him look like a Republican which you can't really get away from that because that's how they're portrayed but anyway uh, it seems like for some reason the republics of Texas and California joined together and in the south, you had Florida with some other states. So there were actually three fractured American sections. And you also had the mid middle America. So you had the Southern Americans, the Western Americans, Central Americans, and then you had the Northeast, which was the bad guys, the authoritarian Washington DC, But if you want to see uh, urban warfare and uh, scenes like uh, one scene that struck my mind was this black guy that had a tire put around him so he couldn't move his arms and they put some flammable stuff on him and they lit him on fire because he was some kind of subversive or something like that. So there's stuff like that in there. Some stuff's pretty graphic. And uh, there's one scene with a dump truck full of bodies being dumped in a pit, which looks pretty real. And uh, there was another scene where these people had been shot and uh, they fell on the ground. They were, they were killed. Uh, firing squad, you know, for being traitors. And uh, after they fell on the ground, the guy kept shooting. And you could see the bullets hitting the body. And if you've ever seen actual footage, like in Ukraine, of one video I saw where this guy came out of a trench, he was trying to surrender. Russian guy was trying to surrender, and this other Russian guy, they were both unarmed. And they were being watched by a drone. That's the new thing they do now. 
Well, you have drones overhead spotting you, telling other people where you are. And then they come hunt you. These small hunting parties go looking for you. And these two Russian guys wanted to give up. Surrender. And it was like a 90 degree bend in this trench. And every time one of them would stick part of their head out, a bullet would hit their Kevlar helmet. And um, so one guy finally got shot. Then the other guy, because he had to, he just got out of the trench and started running for his life. And I don't think he got more than 15 feet. And they filled him full of 7.62 by 39. And uh, he fell down on the ground and they kept shooting him. And every bullet jolted his body because it's a really heavy round, heavy hitting. And uh, so this movie captured that very realistically. Now I'm gonna walk down here this time because all of that rainwater is gone. There's no mosquitoes out here because there's sunshine out here. They don't like the sun. Plenty of dragonflies. So the dragonflies are awake. So there's the whale rock, because uh, allegedly it looks like the, a whale because of the mouth. I guess it does. I'm gonna grab a couple pictures of it on my Telio phone. Very nice and quiet out here today. So I'm giving myself a once over. I don't see any ticks. Doesn't mean I don't have any. But I'm gonna finish my walking and go home and get in the shower. Like I said, it usually takes a while before they uh, root in, find a spot suitable. So, dragonflies are noisy. So it is nice out here, for sure. No snowmobiling. I'm gonna go up on the rock. Well, they've done a good job cutting up these trees. I don't know if you remember, that was um, sitting right in here, actually. If you fold that up like this, and that tree was growing right on these rocks until the wind came along and knocked it over. And um, if you remember a few weeks ago, it looks like they've come in here since and cut up all those trees out of the way and opened the trail up finally. I'm gonna find my way down here without breaking my neck. Hi. So we'll go back out this way. here beautiful day like today I figured there'd be more people here walking on a Sunday I guess not Well, that mosquito didn't make it. I smooshed him. Or her, actually, those are females. 
That's right, I gotta use the right pronouns or Mother Nature will strike me with lightning or something. Well, the last time we came through here, I had to walk around this or climb over it. So they cut a hole through it, opened up the trails. So that Civil War movie was very interesting. I highly recommend watching it, I really do. It was from the viewpoint of the, these press photographers. And they have their own little story within themselves, which I found to be interesting. So you're basically just traveling around with these photographers. Uh, they work for Reuters, at least that's what he told uh, you don't know that, but that's what he told one of the guys because they had to make sure they understood they were the press. Oh, Reuters, you know, everybody's heard of that. One of those kind of things. So, they pick up this younger girl on the way who wants to be a photographer, a press, press photographer. I guess she's pretty good at what she does, even though she's a novice. And she ends up going with them and a whole story unfolds. And it was actually quite interesting. I enjoyed it. I might actually watch it again. And I rarely say that about any movie made today. But it was made by A24 Studios. A24 Studios has a lot of cool movies. They're one of the few smaller studios that make some things that are good. So, worth a watch. I don't know what the hell that noise was. It sounded like a gorilla. I don't want anything to do with that. Somebody being weird. I'm gonna go up this way. So I definitely recommend checking that out. It is a good movie. Uh, there's nowhere to watch it for free right now except my method, which I'm not gonna reveal on here. It's not illegal what I do either. But I don't want my video channeled off by Google. And we'll go up this one. Google can be sticklers for copyrights and things like that. Oh, that's a dog. Well, stay over there. I don't want to deal with any angry dogs today. That old dog that surged at me the other night was enough for me. Now, I didn't walk yesterday. There was a reason for that. I didn't upload that walk either two nights ago. That's a steep incline. I hear a woodpecker.
Yep. So, the reasoning for my not walking yesterday was I was walking at night. I didn't feel well. I really didn't feel well. It wasn't anything like winded, heart problem, nothing like that. That's I know that's the first thing people are going to think of, but I felt like I was dehydrated. I felt off, a little weak. Not really disorientated, but kind of felt like a couple of times like I was kind of like leaning off to the side and not catching myself. So it wasn't vertigo, it was very weird. What was bothering me was walking on these sidewalks and there was a lot of traffic. So every time you see headlights, you put your head down and it, it almost felt like motion sickness. It was very weird. I usually don't walk at that time of night because of all the traffic. It was earlier in the evening. So, I was dehydrated though. And I got dehydrated before when I got really sick in 2011. Ended up having an IV bag, and this and that, but I've been drinking a lot of stuff with caffeine lately. I love stuff with caffeine, coffee, Coke Zero, and I just wasn't drinking enough water. That's all that was. And it was warm, so not as warm as it has been. But lesson learned. Today I feel wonderful. I've been making a point to drink more water. I went and bought uh, a few 12 packs of sparkling water with no sugar, no caffeine. It's naturally flavored, it says. Raspberry, orange, things like that. With no sugar, so it's not very sweet, but it tastes good, if that makes sense. This hill makes you work. I also took some vitamins. Like I've explained on my walks many times, I do get vitamin deficient. So, Hello. hey, how you doing? So, I head up this way. That was one of those feel you out hellos. <laughs> Whew. Just hit three miles. I'll go up this way. So we just reached three miles. Not a bad day to walk today. I'm going to try to hit that other bench up ahead. On a clear day, you can see Mount Washington from here. And we'll see if we can see it. And if you want to see something awesome, look on YouTube and just type in Mount Vernon Observatory. Mount Washington. 
just type that in. Uh, the live cam. There's an observation deck you can stand on. And they actually have a live cam. And you can see clouds like almost in front of you, slightly overhead, because you're on the ceiling of the world, way up there. It's pretty neat. It is a beautiful day today. Nice and comfy. I'm not going to uh, record my entire seven mile journey today. It would be too long. But we will have between four and five miles. I think you may have find that enjoyable. I might actually cut back to the ranch after I leave here. Re-up on some liquids. And go out and walk a couple more miles. Now, Mount Washington is directly straight ahead here. At the end of this clearing. All I see is a small mountain range. It's kind of hazy. Cloudy out there. So it's not the it's not the best view of it today. That's all right. Best time to see that's in the winter time, actually, because there's a big snow cap on it. There's a snow cap on it now, obviously, but what I mean is, is the air is thinner. I am, as far as humidity, there isn't any in the winter time, so it's just crystal clear. I mean, the air is not thinner. I meant to say it's drier. A lot drier. You can see for miles and miles. Just like the song. I can see for miles and miles. Well, I've showed this to you guys before. This is a... Uh, Kind of memori a memory, uh, memorial, volunteer memorial, it says. 516 feet above sea level here. The city part of Lewiston is always around 2 to 250. This is one of the highest points. It's the highest point in Lewiston, it says. Stanton Bird Club. And north is that way. So, there's that. Yay! So I'm going to head down to this other fireplace down here. And we'll see how much the woods have filled up. There's a trail off to the left here. And it goes all the way down to the power lines. And a swampy area. That I'm not going to go down, but you can see it's pretty well traveled. Some people like to go that way. You've seen me go there a couple times before it was tick season when we went through the woods. I don't know if you remember that. And then we got this uh, memorial thing over here. And we got this fireplace. I don't know if there's anything in there that shouldn't be. Broken bottle. Somebody discarded some junk. So we'll head down this way. Somebody was out there sitting on that rock. Seems to be more people showing up. I got here oh, a little chipmunk. Look at him. Hey, little buddy. There he is, right there. Hi! What you doing? Looking for nuts? Oh, he's having fun. I'll leave him alone. 
Leave him alone, forage for his nuts. I haven't seen the flying grasshoppers yet. They jump up and they flap like butterflies and they fly quite a distance on one leap. There's this guy again. I thought the guy with the bag. I don't know if you remember him. Hey, how are you? Still carrying his bag. All right, we'll, we'll walk down here a little bit. Probably take another trail someplace. Preferably one we haven't been on for a little while. That's where we came in, over here. We'll go down the main drag. See some rose petals. Somebody had a rose here. There's a couple of rose petals we just passed. Well, it's pretty nice today. Nice and quiet. Quiet's good. So I've been recording video for an hour and nine minutes. I've been walking for almost an hour and a half. So. Don't think I have much battery life left on the GoPro on my head. I am using a GoPro by the way. I have it on the standard setting with a couple of tweaks I put in it. One is the linear lens, which is basically widescreen without the fish eye. Crops about 10% off the picture. Looks very nice. I can have up to 4K, but I choose 1080p because of uploading and software for things like youtube it's if you want to sit there for two days working with it that's fine if you're actually doing a an honest production with credits and all that but this little self upload thing 1080p is fine with me and um then it gets changed by the software i use and then youtube compresses it itself for how they feel looks best and smooth on their thing. So, ooh, that right there, my friends, is a mosquito pit. Standing water. Oh yeah, stand still for one second and they come right at you. So, heard something buzz by me. Hopefully, I got him. 
I don't want anything to start drinking my blood. Anything I've ever learned in life is anything that drinks your blood is not good. <laughs> Vampires, mosquitoes, ticks, other parasites, mites. No, thank you. Whew, my back is soaked with sweat. So I'm going through three and a half miles. I might head up the white trail today. Look at the bench out here. Hi, how are you? So we'll head up the white trail. I think this will cut over. I forget now if it's the red or the orange. I want to get at least four miles in here. We're at three and a half right now. So you can see still where all these trees upturned from the storms we had. That must have been crazy out in the woods during that night. Cause that's all you see. There's one there, one there, there's one there, there's one right here. All of these trees right here, they cut it here. And went across to there. And just fell right over out of the ground. And they're all pine trees, most of them conifers, spruces and whatnot. And we get ones like this that snapped and they stood standing. That was uh, pretty great. All right, I replaced my battery. My ears are ringing, not for any other reason than I had a mosquito on my ear and I slapped my ear and now my ear is ringing because it was loud. <laughs> the hazards of walking in the woods. You can see the trees are marked with white can only mean one thing, we're on the white trail. Walk down this way. So we talked about a lot of fun things today. Uh, the other thing with that Civil War movie, if you check it out, it is uh, some very, very excellent firearms displayed in that movie. It's enjoyable just for that aspect. I think you would like it. And uh, they do have the um, CGI enhanced uh, flashes from firing the military weapons. You and I both know when you have flash hiders on your quote-unquote assault rifles, you don't see any flash. But that looks boring on a film, so they go ahead and add it. And a lot of times they use blanks that are pretty hotly loaded, so you get a good fireball. So sometimes it's CGI, sometimes it's actual fireball. But... These uh, firearms that shoot blanks, uh, they have like a kind of a clay, clay projectile that disintegrates. So they don't point those at people. So nowadays they use a lot of the uh, CGI 
uh, to replace dangerous to other actors so you can actually point the firearms have a blank in there that makes a noise and then they add the flash later in post-production and it's a lot safer for everybody and I don't mind it really don't did look cool in this movie so there was a lot of cool stuff in the movie in an urban setting in cities and stuff things that you don't see and they're familiar landmarks and stuff like that so it was definitely visually very entertaining and I would recommend watching it and there's no there's no real political viewpoint to it they don't uh, they don't explain they don't explain what happened caused the Civil War they briefly talk about uh, uh, things happening with politics and some other stuff but it's not a lot of detail on it and it's just about what it would be like if it was happening already that's that's what I liked about it there was no real message with it there was you know it's just a story and it's the kind of thing that it was nice to see because Hollywood has gotten away from that because they always have to put agendas in there and and um, you know there is a part at the end I'm just dying to tell you but if I do it'll spoil the movie and I can't but you know there were some things in the movie that were not factual because it would have been probably another hour of filming another hour of movie but you know everybody knows there's a bunker underneath the White House right so <laughs> the military has got bunkers all over the place so uh, they didn't bother to use any of that in this movie and it didn't really matter it didn't affect anything it's just uh, it was just a little thing that wasn't realistic Kind of like the flash hiders on the weapons and you could still see the muzzle flashes but anyway worth a watch at least for entertainment value i think you'll enjoy it so now i'm gonna walk down this way we'll get down to where the gate is hi how are you and uh, well, I guess it's time to walk on out of here, I suppose. It was a nice four miles today. That was nice. Somebody walking with their daughter through the woods. They're going to regret wearing shorts. A lot of people don't think of that until they get here. I mean, I'd love to be wearing shorts today too. I really would, but I know better. So I'm wearing military cargo pants with the legs tied. Not the warmest things in the world, or the coolest things. But I am going to We're almost at four miles. And this is one of the ways you can come in here. So prevent Lyme disease. It says wear repellent, check for ticks daily, shower soon after being outdoors, and call your doctor if you get a fever or a rash. Hey. Hey. How are you? So I'm not going to wear tick repellent because I don't like spraying chemicals on things if I don't feel it's necessary and I don't think it is for ticks because I know pretty soon I'll be in the shower and they take a while to to root on you anyways. So this is the information area
the pollinator is in peril. Bees and other insect pollinators are in decline throughout the world. That's true. That's why it made me angry. I watched a video of this farmer who was very upset. He was upset because the government in Australia was forcing him to burn his beehive. He's a professional beekeeper. He pollinates all the stuff. The farmers need that. And the government in Australia ordered them to destroy it because of a bee disease that the government claims that the bees had. And I say that because we don't know if they're telling the truth or not. Because as we've learned anything from 2020 globally, is you just cannot trust your government on anything they say. Now, we knew that before 2020, but we actually saw it exampled for us and how bad they really are. Much worse than I thought they were. It was, it was kind of a rude awakening. Probably something necessary for us to see, in my opinion. But I've done four miles in here now, the voice in my ear told me. So I'm going to head back to the ranch to freshen up on liquids. Grab some trail mix. And to be honest with you, I may or may not head out for another two miles. I might just call it a day at five, which is fine. I get at least five. Every time I walk, I get at least five. So, to get my five miles, I'm gonna take the longer route home. And you're not going to see me do the whole route anyway, because like I said, I have to keep the bat cave secret. <laughs> Nobody can know where the bat cave is. So I got a pair of hiking shoes I'm wearing right now that I wore out because you know, I do this a lot and uh, the heels the heels on the back on the inside of the shoe behind the sole uh, the fabric was all worn away from walking and um, it was starting to cause uh, not really blisters but kind of a blistery feeling and you know the shoes are really good quality and um, so it would have been a shame to throw them away because they're still one of my most comfortable hiking shoes. So what I did was, uh, you know, the old saying, if you can't fix it, fix it, duck it. So I used some duct tape. I put some duct tape on the inside to cover up where the fabric was worn out. Walked around with them for a while. Oh, I need another layer on that side. So now I got the inside covered with duct tape, just in that little three inch area in the back behind your heel. And they're like new, I'm wearing those today. Very comfortable. And the duct tape on that silver side, um, you know how duct tape sticks to everything. And I also used cheaper, thinner duct tape. Because if I used the thick duct tape, it'd probably take up too much room. So the cheaper duct tape actually works out better on this. Because I get some good stuff and I get the cheap stuff. Wow, well, look at that sky. Looks like we might get a thunderstorm later or something. starting to feel like that now yesterday the dew point was like 40 43 humidity was at 50 percent 55 percent something like that it was very low it was cool now last night I actually closed the windows it was getting cool I put on my hoodie now today I could feel the humidity is working its way back in 
which is fine. I don't see the duck in here today. Water is probably too low. But hey, you know, he's a duck. He just flap his rear end to another place where there's water and more bugs. So basically, I like to get um, at least five, five miles on each walk. Pretty much walk every day. So, you know, by the end of the week, it adds up. Try to get at least 30 miles a week. 35 to 40 on other weeks. But today I wanted to do a woods walk. If I hadn't have done a woods walk, I definitely would have ended up doing a six to seven mile city walk. It's usually about six and a half. But I wanted to do some woods. So woods we did. I got my shopping stuff done yesterday. Wow, that person had some body odor. Like Red Fox used to say, you gotta wash your ass while he's holding up the tail of a donkey holding his nose. One of the funniest album covers I have. Amazing to me how unhealthy everybody looks. What the hell happened? It's like people are th fine till about 35, 40. And after that, I don't know what the hell happens. Well, we'll go through this way. It's like, what the hell happened? Well, thank you for walking with me today. We'll be wrapping this up shortly. We'll pass the muscle cars. Got those on one of my recent videos. You can actually see them in the thumbnail if you want to watch that walk, if you haven't watched it. So, I'm going to cut up this way. Gas prices are still too expensive. You know, that's what they do. They get you used to a certain price. And then when it comes down 20 cents, they take credit for it. Forgetting the fact that it used to be about two dollars a gallon in 2020. Everything's almost doubled and people are trying to act like it's normal. So I did watch uh, Trump speak at the Libertarian Convention. If you're not familiar, I'm not familiar with that. That is uh, the Libertarian Party, who every year get somebody on the ballot. They always get maybe three, four percent of the vote. You know, they just they're just people that they're never going to win. Okay, they don't have the winner's mindset, 
and Trump is appealing to them to make, you know, make him their candidate. You know, join, join with what's going on. We gotta get rid of Biden. Have some unity, common sense, and uh, we're not gonna agree on everything. Now, when he first started speaking, they were booing him. They were being anti-Trumpers. And he promised to commute the sentence of some guy that was arrested. Some, some guy, his last name is Ubrick something I really don't know the whole story on him but he's a libertarian he was imprisoned probably similarly to Julian Assange and uh, he said he would commute his sentence if he's elected and um, so the libertarians don't like the Republican Party because they know what we know in our own party uh, at least a third of it is corrupt awful politicians um, more of the Democrat Party is corrupt and um, the libertarians are trying to get something done that's constitutional liberty and true liberty not being taxed by the government at all they have a lot of unrealistic things that's never gonna happen it would have been nice if they were doing that when they started bringing taxation around But the sad truth is we have to be taxed now because we get too much infrastructure to support and take care of. Even if we have massive cuts, it would take years to fix it. I mean, it really would. All these municipalities would have to live within their means. And um, we just know they, they're just never going to do that. So... It makes sense to me that Libertarians should combine with the Republicans to get something done constructively, you know, preemptively. The first priority should be getting rid of Biden, All right? Trump's not going to take people's guns away. He's not going to, you know, he's on a lot of the right side of it. I don't agree with everything he says, but most of it I can go with. It's... Anything's better than Biden at this point. So. I think by the time he was done talking, he was winning over the crowd. That was the first initial reaction. And you have to remember, okay, this is the first time in the history of our country, not just a Republican, but any presidential candidate from any political party speaking at a party's convention ever so to put it in perspective this would be like Joe Biden showing up and speaking at the Republican convention okay that's the Libertarian Party is a legitimate party they have a convention if they were smart they'd get the hell out of DC because they're getting corrupt Anything that's in D.C. gets corrupted. I wish the Republican Party would leave D.C. Uh, there are some smart ones that went to Alabama and they purposefully left D.C. to get out of that corruption because it's so tempting to these politicians. So. Oh, that's kind of nice. They hid their uh, power system thing in here with some plants to hide it. That actually looks nice. That's new. So anyway, find out where your primary voting is and your ballots when they're due. Pretty much every place in the country, it should be going on right now. So you can call your city clerk or go to your government website and request an absentee ballot unless you want to vote in person. A lot of places have early voting. 
You can either swing by City Hall, pick up a ballot, fill it out and drop it off in, at City Hall, or in a ballot box or whatever they have in your neck of the woods where you live. So, highly recommended. And again, most of the primaries right now have to do with local. And you know, this is your chance to get rid of the rhino Republicans. Most of them have a lot of primary challengers this year. So start voting for the rhino and vote for the challenger. The person who hasn't been bought and owned. And you're gonna get some guff from other Republicans. I got some guff yesterday from two local Maine Republicans online because I'm voting for Austin Terrio, the one Trump wanted to support, the one he endorsed. Yeah, but Mike Soboleski, he was at 9-11 and digging in the rubble and, and he was this and he's a Marine. And Well, what have you done for me lately? You've been in politics your whole life and Maine is getting screwed up. So obviously we need some new blood. That's just how I'm looking at it. Now he wants to go to Washington DC and be a congressman. Well, I want Austin Terrio. He is mega, he is constitutional, wants a free speech, our guns, less government, less taxing, blah, blah, blah. So Bolesky was doing corporate welfare in, in Augusta as a state representative. He voted for that. I watched him. I watched his floor speech he gave, and I decided when he gave that speech I wasn't going to vote for him. That was corporate welfare. Textbook. And that's what is wrong with Washington, D.C. Lobbyists and corporate welfare and it's a bunch of garbage. They gave a multi-billion dollar corporation who owns the Maine Sea Dogs a 30-year tax credit to pay for club renovations in their clubhouse. And the multi-billion dollar corporation that owns the Sea Dogs owns almost all of the league, at least half of it, 12 of the teams. They have the money to do that. And they didn't because the city of Portland said they would take care of it. And guess what the city of Portland did? They didn't take care of it. They spent their money on immigrants and Biden's BS. So this Mike Soboleski gets up there and says, well, we don't want to lose the sea dogs, which by the way, wouldn't have happened. Would not have happened. He just said that. So anyway, I saw enough of him and uh, I, never, I never see him outright praising Trump. He skirts around it. He's, he's a coward. He's an establishment. As soon as he gets elected, he'll forget we exist. That's just what we've seen too much of that. So anyway, thank you very much for walking with me. Hope you enjoy the rest of the week. Hope you enjoyed the woods walk. And we will talk to you soon, friends. Have a beautiful day. Bye-bye. God bless.